So far, we've seen the concept of point loads or concentrated loads when we use statics. Um, today, we're going to expand this to distributed loads. When you think about it, a lot of type of loads are distributed loads. For example, when you have snow in a roof, that snow is not in a particular location. It's distributed uh, in the roof, so it is everywhere in the roof. The same thing, for example, with the mass of the structural elements. They are distributed along the length of the elements. So it, it is very important to know how to work with distributed loads. What we're going to try to do to, right now is uh, we're going to look at how can we take these distributed loads and derive an equivalent system that is based on a point load. And once we have that point load, you know how to do the rest. You know how to uh, calculate support reactions and everything else we've seen through this semester. So that's what we're going to be focused on, okay? All right, so right now, I'm going to look at um, distributed loads. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. Let's just write that down. And as I said before, we can talk about some examples of distributed loads. So uh, let's write down some examples. Um, uh, for example, we can have uh, the case of a snow load, as we said before. Right. So uh, again, the load of snow is actually distributed in the roof uh, instead of being in a particular location. Uh, another example is when we have water pressure. So when you're looking, for example, at the design of a water tank, the size of that water tank is going to have to be designed based on a distributed load because of that pressure that the water applies to those loads. And another one that might be uh, uh, a little bit simpler to understand or maybe some, some something that we can use for the rest uh, of this video is to look at, for example, a bookshelf. What happens when we have a bookshelf, right? So... Let's say we have a bookshelf. Uh, that's our bookshelf right here. And we have a bunch of books, right? Well, again, we can probably pu pu uh, put a, a number of point loads, but really it will make more sense to do a distributed load, right? A distributed load. So that really is a distributed load. Right, and so they're making the assumption that there are, for example, books. As a matter of fact, one of the heaviest things that uh, you can design for a building is for a library because books are actually quite heavy. Uh, so that's that's a very good example of a distributed load. All right, so how does distributed loads really work? Well, let's just start with something in 3D, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a drawing in 3D of um, a a plate and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my camera off so I can have a little bit more screen to write down. All right, so in 3D, let's say that we have a our, our Z axis, we have our X axis over here, and we have our Y axis somewhere over here. And let's say that we have a plate somewhere in the XY plane, right? So we have a plate right there. And um, let's make the assumption that what we have is a uniform distributed load. That means that we're going to have, we change the color actually, let's make different color. Let's make that distributed load red. We're gonna have some forces that are distributed, right? That's gonna be distributed everywhere on that plate. So I'm gonna try to do that by doing a bunch of arrows on that plate. So that's, that's how we usually look in diagrams and engineering diagrams distributed loads. Now, what happened with these distributed loads? What are some of the characteristics that we're gonna see uh, in these distributed loads, right? Well, one of the things that we're gonna see is that the units are going to be in terms of force over area. And one example of that is going to be uh, pounds per square feet, right? 
And if we use the international system, we're going to see that, that is, for example, newtons over meters square, right? You can also use kilonewtons or millimeters. It depends on the problem that you're working on. But the, the idea is to have a force over an area. Uh, now, when we look at this diagram, sometimes it's useful to take uh, one of the sides and basically change uh, this uh, distributed load in an area for a distributed load in two dimensions. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? Let's say that we know that this distance is say b, right? Now we can take that distributed load that it is in force over area. We can multiply times this distance b, and we're going to end up is with a. I'm going to end up with a with a two dimensional problem. Right, two-dimensional problem. What, what, what do I mean? Well, we're going to end up with something like this. Um, if I look at this from this side, okay, looking at that from that side, I'm going to see my zy plane, right? And my zy plane will look something like this. There's a z. It's going to be my y. And then if I... Um, combine all of that load along that direction B, what I'm going to end up is with a distributed load that is going to look something like this. And I've combined all that load into a two-dimensional load, or actually it's a one-dimensional load in that case. Now, the units of this are going to be different. So this is also a distributed load, right? And the units are not now going to be force over distance, right? So, for example, it's going to be pounds per foot. We're going to have newtons per meter. Those are the typical uh, dimensions or the typical units that you use uh, for those distributed loads. So in many engineering um, applications, you're going to see something like the left-hand side, right? We have that distributed load over the surface, and that really is what is happening. But we can simplify it in some calculations to do something in two dimensions, something like what we see on the right-hand side uh, that is going to make the calculations a little bit e uh, easier to do. All right, so... I still have not told you how we're going to do this, how we're going to change this distributed load to a point load. So let's look at that. So that's that's the big question, right? How do we analyze these problems uh, with distributed loads? So let's say systems. with the uh, distributed loads, right? All right, and if, 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 you, if we're gonna talk about that, I think, I think there is one key thing to mention, okay? And the key there is what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a system that is going to have the same external effect on that structure. So the same way that, for example, in the past, we talk about force coupled systems. And what we were trying to do is basically replace two forces with a couple, right? Uh, is the same external effect on that structure. So I wanna find a system that has a point load that provides the same external effect on that particular system, okay? That's, that's, that's the main idea. All right, so how do we do that? All right, so what we have is, let's say, for example, that we have a, a simply supported beam. Um, so you, you've seen this before. A beam, something like this. Um, some supports like that. All right. And we're going to have a distributed load right here on top. And I'm going to make it um, the same height everywhere, right, just to... Make it simpler just for the explanation. And we know that um, that distributive force will have some magnitude uh, of force uh, uh, over length, 
right? So, so this is my distributed load. So what I want to do is I want to do I want to find an equivalent system, right? I want to do something that is equivalent. So it's the same beam, same thing. Right, so if the length is L is exactly the same length, but I need to put somewhere a point load, right? And when I think about this point load, there is going to be three important things to think about. I need to define what's going to be my magnitude. So for that point load, I need to define my magnitude I need to find my direction, and I need to define where I'm going to put it. What is the location of that point load? All right, so for the magnitude, what we're going to see is that the magnitude of that point load, or that equivalent point load, is the area of the distributed load. Okay, so that's going to be the area of the distributed load. And okay, you're gonna be thinking, wait a second, that doesn't really, that's that's not true. How can we have an area the same thing as a as a force? That well, think think about the units. The units of the distributed load are force over length. Okay, uh, and then you're gonna multiply that by the length of that beam. That's gonna give you units of force. So units are going to work out as long as we find the area of that. So what I mean by that is the area of this distributive force over here, right? So that would be the area of that rectangle on the left-hand side. That's, that's what I mean. So that's going to be the magnitude. When we look at the direction, uh, now the direction is going to be in the same direction as your distributed load, okay? So the direction is the same as the distributed load. So we see that in the left-hand side, in the drawing in the left-hand side, all the forces are going down, vertically down. That means that my equivalent point load is gonna be vertically going down, straight down. That's what it means. If the distributed force was to the right, that means that my equivalent point load needs to be to the right as well. So it's the same direction as your distributed load. And now the location, we're gonna see is that the line of action goes through the same throat of the distributed load, okay? So that is why we were, what we're learning about centroids in the last couple of classes. So it's through the centroid of the distributed load. Right, so that is that is one of the keys right there is that it has to go through the centroid of that distributed load. Now, once we have that equivalent point load, well, you know how to do the rest, right? So you can, for example, uh, do the analysis. So you perhaps uh, take the beam, uh, do the free body diagram, right? You put your unknown reaction forces, you have your point load, and you can just do the analysis like anything that we've seen in the past. So nothing, nothing new there. Now, not all distributed loads are going to look like a rectangle, right? So in some cases, we may have uh, distributed, lo distributed loads that are going to be perhaps uh, a triangle, right? Something like that. Maybe when we have snow that is uh, higher in one side and lower than in the other side. Another example of a triangular force is, let's say that you have a tank and you have some water, right? Uh, what's gonna happen is that on the size of that tank, the distributive force is going to be a triangular force that increases with the, with the depth of the tank. So, so those are some different examples of distributed loads. 
All right, so in summary, uh, what I want you to remember uh, in here is what we're trying to find is we're trying to find an equivalent point load that is going to have the same external effect as that distributed load. Why? Because then we can do the analysis just so like what we learned in the past. So to do that, we need to find the magnitude of that force uh, that is equal to the area of that distributed load. Uh, the direction is going to be exactly the same direction as the distributed load and the location, that means that uh, where do I put that load, that's going to be uh, um, the line of action goes through the centroid of that, uh, of that distributed load.